Welcome to this video in, we will, in which we will have a look at the integration between Docker containers and Cisco ACI. As you can see, here we have a Docker cluster made out of two nodes. Please ignore the names of the servers, OpenStack 1 and 2. It's no OpenStack here, but just plain uh, Docker. Here, as you can see, there are very few containers running in the nodes of the cluster. And what we will see is we will deploy an application based on a compose file. As you can see, this application is made out of two tiers. It's a web tier where I'm running a command just to generate some traffic, and it's uh, which is exposing this TCP port 5000 and a database tier where I'm running again this just is being to a random IP to generate some traffic. Now let's deploy an application instance which we will call test1. So you just need to um, call um, compose and launch the containers. Per default one container for each tier will be launched, one web container and one database container. As you can see, launching containers is very, very quick. If we have a look at the containers running, we can see that, that two new containers have been launched. From an operations perspective, in the network, in the ACI GUI, we can actually see that the, a new application has been deployed. If we go to test one, we can see that this application is made out of two tiers, web and database or Redis. The communication between these two tiers is controlled by ACI contracts. This means that we support micro-segmentation. Even if all containers are getting their IP address from the same range, we can control on which TCP ports or UDP ports containers can speak to each other. If we have a look at the contracts and the filters that control that communication, we can see that Web servers can only be accessed on TCP port 5000, which was exactly the port that was specified in the Docker file, in the Compose file. Now, if you have a look at the um, database ports, it's 6001 and, 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 and another one, but those were not specified in the Compose file. Where are they? These ports can be natively specified optionally in the image of the container. We inspect the image of the container, there you see those two ports that actually are used in order to restrict filter to the database only on whatever ports that are required, 5001 and 6379. If we have a look at the EPGs in the application, we can see exactly which IP addresses what are the IP addresses of the containers for each one of the tiers? As we were saying before, those IP addresses are coming from the same subnet. What we can do here now is to scale up or scale down the application. Obviously, with only one container per tier, scaling down is going to be complicated, so let's go, let's scale up. Let's deploy not one web servers, but three of them. So two additional containers have been deployed as web servers. And if we go um, then to our ACI tool, we will see that the two new containers have been recognized. There you go. We have these additional containers where we can see all well the IP addresses. Now we can deploy additional application instances additional applications similarly to the application that we have just deployed will be recognized by cisco aci containers will get their ip addresses from the same ip subnet for simplicity still each application will not be able to speak to each other unless explicitly configured by the admin as you can see here there are additional two additional application instances with exactly the same architecture as the one before, because all of them are generated upon the same Docker Compose file. If we have a look, for example, at application test 3 at the web tier, we can see 
that the Linux container in that tier has the IP address of 44.1.1.9. Again, even if it's in the same subnet as the rest, it cannot freely speak to each other because there's no ACI contract that allows it. But let's um, verify whether this IP address actually exists inside of the container. In order to do that, we will connect to the console of this container, the web container of application test 3, in order to verify the IP address. Oops, um, I typed the wrong server name, so let's um, go to the first one of the nodes, not to the second, because that, that's where the container is currently running on. And let's see, there we go. If we do IPA, you can see that there you go. Here is a 44.1.1.9, exactly the IP address that were that was displayed in the GUI. That means that there's no network address translation being performed, uh, which um, uh, therefore increase, increases the visibility from a network perspective for container traffic. So that's basically all about it. Now we can start and uh, delete the application instances that we created, test 3, test 2, and test 1, and you will see how these applications are not only deleted from the container cluster, but they are as well deleted from the network, so that the operator, the network operator is already aware that these applications do not exist anymore. Let's verify with Docker PS, but the containers are gone, that's it, and nothing in ACI as well. As you can see, this integration makes it very easy to deploy containers. No additional complexity is imposed over the container admin, but still, network operators have complete visibility for troubleshooting and monitoring of Linux containers. Additionally, security is increased because the network takes care that containers can only speak to each other upon whatever is strictly required and has been configured by the developer in either the container images or the Docker Compose files. I hope this video was interesting for you. Thanks for watching.